Hey guys, Major Kate here. And in today's video, I want to talk about a problem that I've been having for quite some time now. Warzone is in a bit of a stale period right now, but stale also means stable. Today, I want to put you through the paces, test every single DMR to find out which one's the best. And the answer, it's actually going to surprise you. Let's talk. Okay, so let's get real for a second. As a YouTuber, you struggle with what to put out next. Every video is like a lottery ticket. And if it hits the right time and it's about the right topic and the content is on point, the YouTube algorithm will kick it and boom, you get crazy amounts of extra growth. So I'm constantly weighing my options. Every time I'm thinking of a new video idea, there are things that I need to put out, like news related content, update, patch notes, and overall coverage. But that content is time sensitive. No one cares about the season one leaks now that we're in season two. Then there are the videos that I want to put out, original content that is creatively challenging, but ultimately rewarding. And then there are videos like this one, content that I feel that the COD community is missing. This is the video that I would love to see. And in today's video, I want to talk about the best DMR for Warzone. But first, if you're new here to the channel, we're on the road to 200 subscribers. So smack me with a sub button as we cover all things Call of Duty. Let's get into it. I think that Warzone is in a pretty good place when we talk about weapon balancing. There's a nice little variety out there in Verdansk. Haven't seen too much repetition other than the FFAR. And I think that it's definitely the most used weapon right now. The AUG M16 meta is broken, but hasn't really caught on like other metas before it. I think this is the perfect time to compare every single semi-automatic rifle and Warzone. I think that we're going to have to break this video down so that it isn't a massive mess of numbers and what ifs. We're going to be looking at four weapons at a time, dividing them between the marksman rifles on one side and the assault rifles on the other. We're going to be looking at them in the raw state. That means no attachments, unless they absolutely need it, like the AMAX with the M67 rounds. Without that ammo conversion, we wouldn't even make it on the list. With that being said, the weapons that do need set attachments will get punished for it. And finally, when we look at the stats, we'll be looking at them in sections, with the most important first and the more obscure ones later down the line. Things like damage, rate of fire, time to kill, shots to kill and range will play a bigger role because they are the most important. We're gonna look at the second set of stats consisting of mobility, things like aim down sight time, sprint out time and theoretical time to kill, a mixture of aim down sight time and time to kill to paint a better picture of what really comes out on top. Last, we're gonna look at the more occasional base stats like magazine size, how many enemies can be eliminated per mag, and if the weapon requires set crutch attachment. These stats are important, but not enough to change the decision. So grab yourself a snack, strap in, because we have a ton of data to go through, and the winner, well, it might surprise you. Choose your fighter. We're gonna be starting off with the marksman slash tactical rifles, and those will be the EBR-14, the SKS, the DMR-14, and the Tap City 3 No bolt actions, no crossbow, just semi-automatics. Looking at the damage, the EBR-14.60, the SKS-57, the DMR-14, just like the EBR, it's also going to do 60 damage, and the Type-C3 does 72 to 56 damage under certain circumstances, and we'll look at that later. For the fire rate, the EBR-14 comes in at 297 rounds per minute, the SKS at 328 rounds per minute, the DMR-14 at 400 rounds per minute, and the Type-C3 a bit shorter than that at 361 rounds per minute. Looking at the shots it takes to kill, the EBR-14 takes 5 shots to kill, the SKS takes 5, and the DMR-14, well, it takes 5 too. Meanwhile, the TAPS-A3 does 4 shots to the upper chest at 22 meters, and then 5 shots to anywhere on the torso after 22 meters. I had to include that because the TAPS-A3 has a massive advantage before the 22 meter mark, and after that, it becomes standard when compared to other guns on the list. Speaking of range, let's talk about the first damage range. The EBR-14 does 65 meters with no attachments. The SKS, 50 meters. The DMR-14, 18 meters with no attachments. And finally, the tap 3 does 22 meters like we talked about before, and then it drops off. Looking at the single-handedly most important star in Warzone, and that is time to kill. The EBR-14 comes in at 808 milliseconds. The SKS comes in at 730 milliseconds. And the DMR comes in at 600 milliseconds. Meanwhile, the tap 3 comes in at 498 milliseconds within its first damage range, and then it drops off to 664 milliseconds after the 22 meter mark. There is no point in talking about the EBR-14. After this set of stats, the answer is clear. It lags behind in every single way possible, its damage is not impressive, it takes sniper ammo, it only comes to a 10 round mag, and honestly, it's just a dud. Moving on from that and taking a look into our handling, the aim down sight time for the SKS is 284 milliseconds. The DMR-14 is 317 milliseconds, a tiny bit slower. But the TAP-63 comes in at 284 milliseconds, the exact same as the SKS. 
for our spin out, we get three completely different numbers. 284 milliseconds for the SKS, 267 milliseconds for the DMR14, and the Type 3 well comes in at just 167 milliseconds. Here, we're seeing the SKS catch up in the MDOWN side department, but losing that advantage when it comes to the sprint out. Meanwhile, the Type 3 with a superior time to kill, leaps to the forefront and leaves the competition behind. Looking at our theoretical time to kill, meaning our aim down side time, combined with our time to kill, the SKS comes at 1014 milliseconds, the DMR at 917 milliseconds, and the TAP-63 comes in at 782 milliseconds under the 22 meter mark, and then it drops off to 984 milliseconds after 22 meters. You can speed up the time to kill on both of them using the titanium barrel, but it will reduce the range for both the DMR-14 and the TAP-63. On the DMR-14, it doesn't really affect it, but on the TAP-63, it really hurts that four shot kill range. Reviewing this set of stats, and it's clear that we can eliminate the SKS from the competition. It's just not competitive enough. It's time to kill slower than the Tap City 3 and the DMR 14. And it also takes sniper ammo, which means that you can only hold 40 rounds in reserve instead of the 210 that the competition can. But moving on to our final section, the DMR 14 has 20 rounds in its magazine. The Tap City 3 has 25 rounds in its magazine. But taking a look at the magazine difference of five more bullets and the Tap City 3 just looks like the better option. When we look at our enemies killed per mag, the DMR-14 can down a whole squad, but the Type 3 can down an entire squad and eliminate one person just before the rest. The Type 3 is less consistent, but not in a bad way. The 4 to 5 shot kill range is amazing. You can delete someone in 4 shots at close range and then you trade blows with the DMR-14 afterwards. Bottom line, the Type 3 is a weapon that can kill in 4 shots sometimes rather than 5 shots all the time. It has a bigger ammo pool, allowing for more room to miss shots. Once we get into the 5 shot kill range, it's only really 64 milliseconds slower than the DMR-14. But when we add aim down sight into the equation, and the gap closes from 64 milliseconds down to just 41 milliseconds. As it stands, we have the EBR-14 in 8th place, the SKS in the 7th place, the DMR-14 in the 6th place, and the Type 3 taking the 5 slot. Let's move on to the funner side of assault rifles. Choose your fighter. We have the CR-56 Emax with the M67 rounds followed by the AS Bow with the 10R SPP rounds, then the M4A1 with the 458 SOCOM rounds, and finally, the FAL in its raw state. Looking at our damage values, and the CR-56 comes in at 57. The AS Bow comes in at 57 as well. The M4A1 comes in at 48. This is the lowest damage out of all the weapons on the list. As for the FAL, we get two damage profiles, 68 and 54. And just like the Type 3 we'll get into that later. Looking at the rate of fire, the AMAX comes in at 309 rounds per minute, sitting between the EBR-14's 297 rounds per minute and the SKS 328 rounds per minute. It's already not looking too good as it offers the exact same firepower sitting between the EBR-14 and the SKS. The AS Bow comes in at a blitzing fast 500 rounds per minute. Meanwhile, the M4A1 breaks all-time records with 652 rounds per minute. This is by far the fastest semi-automatic in the entire game. On the other hand, the FAL comes in at a super competitive 500 rounds per minute. Looking at the shots that it takes to kill, the AMAX and the AS Bow tie with 5 shots to kill. The M4A1 lags behind at 6, the only weapon that takes more than 5 shots to kill on the list. And finally, the FAL fills in for the Type 3 with the same 4 to 5 shot kill arrangement. Moving on to the most important stat, that being time to kill, and the AMAX comes in at 776 milliseconds. And if we eliminated the SKS, well, the CR-56 has to go. The CR-56 has a lower time to kill than the SKS. However, the real downside is that 10 round mag. 10 rounds is just not enough for Warzone, especially with a long time to kill like 776 milliseconds. Looking at our new list, we have the EBR-14 in the eighth place, the CR-56 AMAX taking the seventh place, the SKS is now in the sixth place, the DMR-14 gets bumped up to the 5th place, and the Tab 3 takes the 4th place on the list. Going back to our time to kill, and the AS Bow comes in at an amazing 480 milliseconds, which is faster than the DMR-14 and the Tab 3. Even though it beats the DMR-14 hands down, it's only 18 milliseconds faster than the Tab 3. But there is a problem. The AS Bow has a 10 round magazine, with no extended mags available. Therefore, shaving off 2 frames off your time to kill, it's not worth having 150% less ammo. There is also a huge problem with the AS bow, bullet velocity. At 50 meters, and you really, really start to struggle. The bullet drop and the bullet velocity makes it difficult to hit anything. The AS bow earns itself a spot below the DMR-14 and the Type 63. Going back to our time to kill, and the M4A1 with the SOCOM round 
absolutely destroys the competition with a 460 millisecond time to kill. The FAL shows up with a 360 milliseconds time to kill and then dropping out to 480 milliseconds. Let's talk about range. The M4A1 with the Socom rounds comes in at a crazy high 92 meters. Meanwhile, the FAL comes in at 18.7 meters and then dropping off to the 480 millisecond time to kill after the 18.7 meter mark, which is only 20 milliseconds slower than the M4A1. Looking at our aim down sight time, and the M4A1 comes in at 250 milliseconds. The FAL lags behind at 284 milliseconds. Moving down to our sprint out, and both the M4A1 and the FAL have a sprint out time of 267 milliseconds. So for a theoretical time to kill, the M4A1 closes the gap with a 710 millisecond theoretical time to kill. The FAL comes in at 644 milliseconds with an S4 shot kill range, and then 764 milliseconds after its 4 shot kill range. Ammunition wise, they both use assault rifle ammo, but the M4A1 falls victim to the AS bow slash CR56 syndrome because it only has 10 rounds with no option for extended mags. The FAL on the other hand has a 20 round magazine. When we look at enemies killed per mag, the M4A1 can only take out one enemy before needing to reload, and the FAL can take out four before needing to reload. Going into our final stat, the FAL needs no attachment to make it work, but the M4A1 does need the SOCOM rounds so it can be a proper DMR. To wrap it all up, the FAL is the best overall weapon, with a faster time to kill of 360 milliseconds. Meanwhile, being only 20 milliseconds slower when compared to the M4A1 at range. However, that range can be extended with barrels and the monolithic suppressor. And it has a really good aim down sight time when compared to the rest on the list. It takes the most common kind of ammo, and it also has a 20 round magazine to sort through multiple enemies. However, the M4A1 has the fastest time to kill at range. And even though it only holds 10 rounds in the magazine, that time to kill is amazing for counter sniping. And if you have a fast enough trigger finger, snipers start to wonder what full auto can take away 3 plates with just 3 hits at 100 plus meters away. The M4A1 with the Socom rounds has an amazing 92 meter range, and it has really good bullet velocity to back it up. And this range and bullet velocity can be boosted with the Grenadier Barrel and the Monolithic Suppressor, reaching upwards of 140 meters. Looking at our list one last time, and the EBR-14 doesn't stand a chance. I mean, it's not good at anything. The CR-56 is a bit of an improvement, with a faster fire rate, taking a saw rifle, and a better time to kill. Therefore, it lands in the 7th place. The SKS rightfully earns its 6th place slot by having a better time to kill than both the EBR-14 and the AMAX, and even though it takes sniper ammo, that 20 round mag does help a lot. The AS Bow come next, offering one of the best time to kills on the list, but it gets held back by that 10 round magazine. However, what puts it so far down in the list is not the magazine, it's the horrible bullet velocity. Coming up on the fourth spot is the DMR-14, offering a consistent time to kill of 600 milliseconds. And even though it's a lot slower than the AS Bow, the 20 round magazine and the ability to engage at longer ranges puts it at a higher place than all the other contenders. The Type City 3 takes the third slot on the list for its impressive time to kill at close range of 498 milliseconds, meanwhile holding it down at range with a 664 millisecond time to kill. The 25 round base mag is amazing for sorting multiple enemies, and the handling stats are better than all the others on the list. For a runner up, we have the M4A1 with the 458 SOCOM rounds, offering a 480 millisecond time to kill, beating everything on the list past 30 meters, with a base range of 92 meters. And coming in at the number one spot is the FAL. It has an incredible 360 millisecond time to kill up close and the second fastest time to kill at range. It takes assault rifle ammo, pretty good handling, very low recoil. Out of all the semi automatics, this is the one. For the final verdict, I tend to use the FAL at close range, as now the DMR comes close to that time to kill. The minute that I pass 30 meters, I'm switching to the M4A1 kitted for long range, perfect for counter sniping and providing sniper support. If you would like my personal loadout on these two weapons, leave your comment down below and I'll make sure to make a full dedicated video on that. And well, that's all for me today. A deep dive into the current state of the semi-automatic rifles and which one is the best one in Warzone. But now, it's time for me to hear from you guys. What is your favorite weapon to use in Warzone? And now that you've seen this video, will you be making changes to your current loadout? Feel free to leave your opinion down in the comment section below. Again, we're on the road to 200 subscribers, so if you guys like to be part of the crew, smack me with a sub button, I would love to have you. I like waiting, it's always appreciated. Also, follow me over on Twitch. And that's all for me today. I'm Major Cade. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.